Our first speaker on Why Stories Matter is one half of the musical comedy phenomenon, Paul and Storm. He is the co-founder of the geek variety show Wootstock and the musical web series Learning Town. Their music has been featured in Despicable Me 2, on the Dr. Demento show, on various different web series and podcasts, uh, giving you uh, the hard-hitting facts on why stories matter. Please welcome Paul Saborin. Keep clapping, I'm not ready yet. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, members of the Galactic Senate, let us pray. Oh, mighty Vlogos. <laughs> Our two-headed brother-father. We humbly beseech that you watch over us at this weekend's convocation. Grant us that our interactions be civil, lively, and fruitful. Guide us to read and follow thy sacred teachings, delivered unto us as the code of conduct. And help us remember to be always awesome, now and in all things. All hail the glow cloud. Amen. So then, why do stories matter? Well, I contend it is because they have been around as long as we have. And my goal this morning is to provide some degree of context for this weekend's proceedings. Because before we can discuss where we are and where we are going, we must first understand where we have been. As such, I would like to briefly walk through the complete 200,000 year history of human storytelling. <laughs> I have approximately six minutes, so let's get going. <laughs> Roughly 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens emerged in East Africa. This new hominid's increased capacity for abstract thought and use of symbolism to creatively express culture led, over the subsequent 150,000 years, to the development of the first stories, followed almost immediately by the first comments section. <laughs> A tradition grew in which ancient humans would gather around their fire at night, while the weakest and palest members of the tribe would spin fanciful tales <laughs> in a desperate attempt to make sense of their frightening, harsh existence, and also to get noticed by the more attractive members of the tribe. <laughs> with the development of writing in the Bronze Age, the earliest written literature came out of Sumeria with the instructions of Shurapak, Egyptian pyramid texts, and most notably, in 21st century BC Mesopotamia, the Epic of Gilgamesh, regarded by many as the first great work of literature. As previously mentioned, it tells the story of a young boy with great powers who is whisked away to a magical school for young wizards and witches. <laughs> Thank you, that's called pandering. The 8th century BC brought central works of the Western canon, the Iliad and Odyssey, stories attributed to a blind poet named Homer, but which were in actuality written by Dalton Trumbo. Look him up, young nerds. Over the subsequent five centuries, the Greeks wrote many stories about naked people, gods, and naked gods. The Romans wrote about laws and ethics and steadfastly refused to round off the bottoms of their ewes. Somewhere in there also, Confucius wrote The Art of War and the Tao Te Ching, and Mahabharata wrote the Ramayana. But as with most high school curricula, we are going to basically just skip right past Asia. I'm only a messenger, folks. Additionally, North Africa was generating some very juicy yarns about sex, death, vengeance, and rules about pork. More on that in a little bit. 
As BC turned to AD, the next 15 centuries saw the Roman Empire rise and fall, and an ongoing series of crusades, plagues, and monks scribbling in abbeys. Some highlights from that period. 1138, Geoffrey of Monmouth publishes the first narrative account of the Arthurian legend, eventually leading to the single greatest achievement of the modern era. Thirteen, please people, I've got a lot to get through and not much time. 1351, Boccaccio's Decameron, the story of a group of young men and women attempting to escape the Black Death in a secluded tavern, telling tales of wit, practical jokes, eroticism, and tragedy. 1439, Johannes Gutenberg debuts the printing press. 1441, Gutenberg releases the printing press 2S, which uses an entirely different power cord than the original. 1526, the Tyndale Bible is the first printed in English, leading to 1,500 years of uninterrupted universal peace throughout Western civilization. 1589 to 1614, William Shakespeare publishes 38 plays and 154 sonnets. A body of work now proven to have been written by a consortium of writers, including Christopher Marlowe, Francis Bacon, Edward de Vere, William Stanley, Sir Walter Raleigh, Mary Sidney, Mary Shelley, Mary Queen of Scots, the British House of Lords, the 69 Mets, the second, fourth, fifth, seventh, tenth, and eleventh doctors, Frank Darabont, Richard Bachman, two milkshakes, and a pear. Scholars, scholars also generally agree that Frank Darabont's early drafts were the vastly superior of the works. Given my time limit, I'm going to have to blow past the 17th through 19th centuries, an era marked by inconvenient collars, corsets, and waistlines, and Moby Dick. In the early 20th century, the developing technologies of radio, film, and television led to many new avenues of storytelling. Some artists took full advantage of these new media, but the path was fraught with peril. <laughs> and it is predicted that by 2047, all forms of written, visual, and audio media will be dedicated solely to the Marvel Universe. Wow, okay, uh, gotta go through this. Uh, blah, 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 Fitzgerald, blah, 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 Gertrude Stein, blah, 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 musicals, blah, 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 books everyone says that they like but nobody really does like. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 Cold War, cholera, yuppies, fatwas, cyberpunk, graphic novels, dreams, Canada! Door stops, young adults suddenly learn to read, and J.K. Rowling, kills millions and millions of trees. That brings us up to modern times, but I'm not quite finished. I would like to take my last remaining minute, if I could, for a very important announcement. Traditionally, there have been four general classifications of conflict in literature. If you all will forgive my use of the patriarchal tense, these are man against man, man against nature, man against society, and man against self. The International Council of Literature Ontological Studies has authorized me to announce to you today the official adoption of 14 new classifications of conflict. These are man against machine, man against the clock, man against burrito, man against mannequin, man against Ikea, man against con, Man Against Superman, excuse me, Man Against Man. Not all of you get that joke, that's fine. Man Against Superman, Man Against Bizarro Superman, Man Against Evil Unshaven Superman who splits off from Good Superman and then they fight in a junkyard. Man Against Hair. Man Against Facial Hair. Man Against Prequels. And possibly most importantly, man against ethics in journalism. That's the end. Thank you very much. <laughs>